Okay, so I wanted to cover uh, relative motion in two dimensions. And for this example, I want you to imagine um, a river. And let's say on average it has a width of uh, W. So we'll just call it W. And we want to try and get across it in a boat and <clears throat> we know that the boat itself can get across um, still water um, at a rate of I don't know let's just call it V sub B. So that's the, the speed of the boat if the water were still. Now the river itself flows downstream. Uh, we're going to say with a speed of V sub W. So both of these speeds are relative to the still earth, the still ground. And let's say I want to know what is going to be the motion of the boat relative to an observer um, from the shore. So our frame of reference in this case is the earth. So I want velocity of boat with respect to the earth. That means I need the velocity of the boat with respect to the water um, plus the velocity of the water with respect to the earth. Uh, the way I have this written out that would be uh, velocity of the boat plus the velocity of the water uh, should get us our final answer. So if this boat is going directly across, if it's headed directly across, we would take V sub B and add it to V sub W. We can use Pythagorean theorem to get our answer. And um, since we know these two speeds, we can use inverse tangent um, to get our angle. So as a scalar, or not as a scalar, but um, without the vector notation, we'd be saying speed of b squared plus speed of w squared square rooted. Inverse tangent opposite over adjacent uh, would be our angle um, relative to the the heading for the boat so it's um, so be careful here if this would if this came out to 30 degrees we would say um, well if this is the bow and this is the stern um, the left side is called is the port side and you can remember that left and port both have uh, four letters in them, both ending with T, so port side is the left side. So we could say um, however many degrees starboard if we wanted. Because I, I, I didn't give a, like a compass here. There's no north, south, east, west. We don't have that to use. Um, and don't say up or down. This isn't a submarine. It's not going into the water. Um, so yeah, don't deal with that. Um, and, and that's how we can we can get the motion for the the observer's frame of reference so they're gonna see the boat uh, head this way uh, let's see oh let's say I want to figure out how far downstream it moves so if this is the width um, maybe I wanted to figure out the length of river that it's that's being covered um, well if we take a look here if I take the width of the river, divide by the time it takes to cross the river, uh, that's the same as the speed of the boat with relative to the still water. And the time it takes to cross should also be the time it takes to head downstream. Because if the time is any longer, the boat's already on the shore. And if the time is shorter, the boat hasn't reached the shore yet. So the time it takes to move downstream has to be the same as the time it takes to go across. Well, this would be the speed of the water. 
So what we're getting here uh, are similar triangles. So this would be the actual displacement of the boat divided by time. And, and so we see that I could replace all of these with the respective uh, magnitudes. So this would be the width of the river, this would be the length, and this would be the actual displacement of the boat. Um, and it's a similar triangle, so all the angles and everything are the same. Uh, so what that tells us is we can use similar triangles to, to actually figure stuff out if we wanted to, or um, we can use our speed equations. Either way, uh, it, it works in our, our favor. So if I want to find the length downstream, I would take um, the speed of the water and multiply it by the time it takes to get across. So I already know the width. I know the speed of the boat. I can figure out the time. So once I get that time, I can figure out the length downstream, or if we use our similar triangles, I know the width and the length um, should have the same ratio as the speed of the boat in still water and the speed of the river relative to the ground. And from there, I could figure out the, the length as well. So all that's possible. Um, it's whatever makes the most sense to you. Uh,